This is a presentation of Taxiway Design Section 8, and Around Taxiways, by the Federal Aviation Administration. This section explains how to design end around taxiways, or EATs, which must be pre-approved by the FAA Office of Airport Safety and Standards. Submit projects for approval through your local FAA airport's regional or district office. End around taxiways, or EATs. EATs are taxiways constructed around the end of the runway, like the one shown here. EATs can increase airport capacity by allowing airplanes to cross the approach to a runway without specific clearance from air traffic control. Since an EAT allows one airplane to overfly another, special conditions regarding location, elevation, and screening apply. The EAT must be entirely outside the Runway Safety Area, or RSA, and all Instrument Landing System, or ILS, critical areas. Airplanes on the EAT may not penetrate the 40 to 1 departure surface or any other surface identified in Order 8260.3, United States Standard for Terminal Instrument Procedures, also known as TERPS. EAT Distance from the Runway End First, we'll discuss how to calculate the distance of the EAT from the runway end based on the RSA and 40 to 1 departure surface. The equations throughout this video are described in full detail in Advisory Circular 150-5300-13, Airport Design. We summarize these equations in the End Around Taxiways Equations Guide, provided under related content for this video. In this unscaled illustration showing a section of an EAT running perpendicular to a runway end, Note that the center line of the EAT must be at least 1,500 feet from the stop end of a runway, and it must extend for a minimum of 500 feet on either side of the extended runway center line. Tail height and the departure surface. The tails of airplanes on the EAT must not penetrate the 40 to 1 departure surface. This design example, based on Airplane Design Group 2 or ADG2, shows an unscaled elevation view of an airplane on the EAT. This airplane has the maximum tail height of 30 feet. A 40 to 1 surface rises 30 feet in a horizontal distance of 1,200 feet. Assuming the EAT is at the same elevation as the end of the runway, the airplane must be 1,200 feet from the end of the runway to avoid surface penetrations while the airplane is under the departure surface. As shown on this plan view of a runway end and EAT, an airplane on the EAT crosses under the departure surface only at the point where the departure surface rises to the height of the tail. In this example, this point is 1,200 feet from the end of the runway and joins the EAT where it is 1,500 feet from the end of the runway. This unscaled elevation view of an airplane on an EAT shows an ADG-3 airplane with the maximum tail height of 45 feet. In this example, the 1,500-foot requirement does not influence the EAT design because the departure surface takes 1,800 feet to rise 45 feet. Of course, if the elevation of the EAT is higher or lower than the end of the runway, the required horizontal distance from the end of the runway will be greater or less than 1,800 feet. This plan view shows an EAT that is 1,800 feet from the end of the runway for its entire path under the departure surface. Screen Width Next, we'll discuss the critical importance of screening airplanes on the EAT from the view of pilots taking off on the runway. A pilot could unnecessarily abort takeoff if an airplane on the EAT is visible and appears to be crossing the runway. A visual screen must be installed to block the pilot's view of airplanes on the EAT. As shown on this plan view, the visual screen must be installed between the end of the RSA and the EAT. In addition, do not locate the screen in any Taxiway Object Free Area, or TOFA, or ILS Critical Area. It must not penetrate the Inner Approach Object Free Zone, or OFZ, the Approach Light Plane, any visual aid surfaces, or any other TERPS surfaces. 
To calculate the required width of the screen, start by defining the half width of the screen. To do this, establish the V1 point, or the point at which the airplane reaches V1 speed. For EAT design purposes, the V1 point is assumed to be located at 40% of the runway length, or DV, from the stop end of the runway. Next, draw a line from the V1 point through the far side of the entrance taxiway closest to the end of the runway at the holding position. The half width of the screen, or DE over 2, is equal to the distance from the runway center line to the hold line, or DH, times the sum of the distance from the runway end to the screen, or DS, divided by DV plus 1. The resulting screen is symmetrical about the extended runway center line and blocks the pilot's perceived view of airplanes on the EAT from one side of the taxiway or runway hold line to the other. Screen height. Research shows that the visual screen must be high enough to hide the engine nacelle of an airplane on the EAT from the pilot's eye at the V1 point. This unscaled elevation view shows the stop end of the runway and the EAT center line. At the V1 point, the point on the runway that is the distance DV from the end of the runway, the placement of the top of the EAT screen blocks the pilot's view of the nacelle of the airplane on the EAT. This unscaled elevation view shows the stop end of the runway and the EAT center line at a lower elevation. To find the required height of the screen above grade, first calculate the slope of the imaginary line from the pilot's eye at the V1 point to the top of the engine nacelle of an airplane on the EAT. This slope is the difference in elevation between the pilot's eye at the V1 point and the top of the engine nacelle of an airplane on the EAT, divided by the sum of the horizontal distance between the V1 point and the EAT center line, or DEAT plus DV where DEAT is the distance from the stop end of the runway to the EAT center line. Use the dimensions described in the AC and as shown here to find the slope from the pilot's eye to the top of the screen, including elevation V1, the elevation of the runway center line at the V1 point, HI, the height of the pilot's eye above the runway, Elevation EAT, the elevation of the center line of the EAT, and H nacelle, the height of the engine nacelle above the taxiway. These dimensions are used to form the equation seen here. The aircraft characteristics table in the AC contains the information you need by ADG to calculate the height of the pilot's eye at the V1 point, which equals the elevation at the V1 point plus the height of the pilot's eye above the runway. After finding this slope, use it to find the elevation of the top of the screen. The elevation of the top of the screen is equal to the slope times the difference between the distance from the runway end to the EAT center line, or DEAT, and the distance from the runway end to the screen, or DS, plus the elevation of the engine nacelle. The height of the screen above grade is equal to the difference between the elevation of the top of the screen and the elevation of the ground at the screen. To find the required height at your airport, use the data and dimensions presented here and ADG data in the AC to determine the required height of the EAT screen. The AC also contains detailed formulas and drawings like this one the illustration showing minimum dimensions for an EAT for ADG-4. Remember, before proposing feasibility studies or beginning to design EAT projects, obtain pre-approval from the FAA Office of Airport Safety and Standards, Airport Engineering Division, or AAS-100. Work with your local FAA airport's regional or district office to submit your EAT project for approval. This has been a presentation of Taxiway Design Section 8, End Around Taxiways, by the Federal Aviation Administration. 
produced by Joint Venture Solutions. 